When I was a child, my parents instilled in me the importance of helping family. I had a brother whom I supported a lot as we grew up, and later on, I found a wonderful wife, a home, and a job. I thought everything was going well until my brother, consumed by jealousy, reappeared and tried to take my wife away. Suddenly, I found myself alone against everyone. After enduring over five hours on the bus, I glanced out the window as we passed the Oakland Zoo, nearing home. My residence in Oakland was close, where I could finally relax and reunite with my wife, Susie, after six long months. My name is Joe Thomas, a 27-year-old former senior airman in the U.S. Air Force. Just hours ago, I completed my four-year active duty as a fighter aircraft integrated avionics technician, ensuring the functionality of aircraft electronic systems. I had just returned from my third and final six-month deployment abroad, this time stationed at Ramstein Air Force Base in southwestern Germany. After landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California, I chose a bus ride through the Californian countryside to unwind and reflect on my future career path with my military service now behind me. Important decisions about my professional trajectory are on the horizon. My father, Bill Thomas, has been an electrical contractor in Oakland for years, overseeing the family business. Upon completing high school, both my twin brother John and I apprenticed under dad, while I pursued a career in the Air Force. Post-qualification, John remained to assist our parents with the business. I'm torn about returning to work there, I'm considering something fresh, something different. While I have the option to work for the family business and reconnect with mom, dad, Susie, and John regularly, the idea of going back to crawling through house settings and dealing with clueless homeowners is something I'd rather avoid. Then there's my wife, Susie, whom I started dating during my apprenticeship and married a year after joining the Air Force. Our marriage hasn't turned out as I'd hoped, it's gradually declined from good to bad. The six months leading up to my current deployment were initially fine, but I felt us drifting apart during that time. Being away for the past six months probably hasn't helped either. Maybe it's because we've been married for three years now and together for over five, so perhaps the novelty of our relationship has started to fade. The real question is, how do I rekindle that spark? Susie also works for the family business, assisting my mom in managing it, handling finances, arranging jobs, and overseeing the electrical gear sales, ordering, and stocking, while dad, John, and the other electricians handle customer jobs. I'm uncertain about how she'd react to my decision not to return to the family business but pursue something new instead. I always believed she took the job to have family nearby while I was away, even though it was my family, not hers. Susie, originally from the Midwest, relocated to the Bay Area for college, majoring in business. I wonder if Dad's business would be as successful without her, even though Mom is technically the business manager, we all know Susie runs the show. After catching a connecting bus a few blocks from home, I opted to walk the rest of the way, carrying my duffel bag. Arriving at my doorstep by 4 p.m., I'm unsure if Susie will be there, since my original plan was to return around 7 p.m. with her picking me up from Fairfield after my transport to Travis Air Force Base. Fortunately, I managed to catch an earlier transport to Edwards, allowing me to take the bus across California this afternoon. Upon entering the house, everything appeared much the same as it did six months ago when I left. As I made my way into the bedroom to unload my duffel bag, I noticed the disarrayed bed with sheets scattered across the floor. The sound of the shower indicated that Susie might be home after all. Entering the bathroom, I caught a glimpse of her showering in the midst of washing her hair. I paused for a moment, taking in the sight of my wife before me. Susie stands about five feet five inches with brown eyes, sporting a short brunette bob. Are you getting ready to come pick me up? I asked, startled. Susie jumped and let out a small scream. My God, you scared me half to death. What are you doing home already? I caught an early transport, so here I am, I replied. I'll be out shortly, okay? 
I was thinking of joining you. I've been traveling for the better part of the last 24 hours. I'll be done soon, then you can have the shower to yourself. Where's the welcome back, or the proximity of welcome back, it felt like Susie wasn't even happy to see me. Exiting the bathroom, I grabbed my clothes from the bag and headed to the laundry. By the time. I started the washing machine and left the laundry room. Susie emerged in the lounge room wearing a bathrobe, her hair wrapped in a towel. So, are you really done with the Air Force? They didn't convince you to re-enlist? They tried, but no. I finished my active duty. Can they call you back if there's a war? They can, but only for the next four years. Susie nodded and headed towards the bedroom. I went to the kitchen to get a glass of water. This wasn't the warm welcome I expected from Susie. I hoped for a hug, a kiss, anything. She acted as if I'd just returned from the store, not a six-month deployment overseas. This wasn't like Susie at all. I trailed after her into our bedroom, lingering in the doorway as she hastily gathered the sheets from the floor and straightened up the room. Eventually, Susie caught sight of me. Are you just going to stand there, or are you going to lend a hand? I didn't create this mess. How did the room end up looking like a tornado hit it? Have you been tossing and turning in the middle of the day? Susie shot me a glare. For a moment, I was rushed this morning before work. I came home early to prepare for your return, and yet you don't seem thrilled to see me. Susie didn't reply, focusing on making the bed. I turned and headed back to the living room, settling onto the couch. I'm not implying Susie was unfaithful while I was away in Germany. Our relationship had been cooling before my departure, but her apparent indifference to my return after six months was concerning. I decided to lay back on the couch and push the thoughts aside. Before long, I drifted off to sleep. Joe! Joe, dinner will be ready soon. Go take a shower. I awoke from my sleep, finding darkness outside indicating I had slept for a few hours. Heading to the bathroom, I turned on the shower, undressed, and stood beneath the hot water, feeling refreshed and relaxed. Upon returning to the dining room, Susie had set the table with porterhouse steaks and mashed potatoes, my favorite. Mmm, -hmm, that smells delicious. Welcome home, Joe. Thanks. We also have ice cream for dessert. Smiling at Susie, I began to enjoy my meal. Why didn't you call me from Fairfield? I could have picked you up. I didn't fly into Travis. I landed at Edwards this morning and took the bus here. I thought you'd still be at work. Did you come straight home or did you visit your mom and dad? No, straight home to the warm embrace of my loving wife. I'm sorry. I had plans for tonight and you surprised me. I didn't mean to neglect saying hello properly. It's okay. We can make up for it after dinner. I have six months of missing you to catch up on. Susie continued with her meal, rarely meeting my gaze, lost in her thoughts. Are you still enjoying your job with my family? You're not obligated to stay now that I've finished my service in the Air Force. No, I genuinely like it there. I'd stay if I didn't. Do you want me to keep working there? I don't mind at all. I just assumed you preferred it while I was away, but now that I'm back, you have the freedom to choose. I'm happy where I am. Your mom is wonderful to work with. And what about Dad and Jan? Are they treating you well too? Yes, absolutely. Your dad and Betty rely on me. Jan is just as kind as ever. The others respect me as the boss, so they behave, or else. We finished eating and moved to the lounge for ice cream. Susie took the recliner, leaving a space between us on the couch. Why did it feel like she was avoiding me? After dessert, she reached for the TV remote. Susie, could we leave it off? Come sit with me, please. I'd like some quality time together. 
Susie approached me tentatively, taking a seat on the couch beside me. However, instead of leaning back and cuddling up, she perched near the edge, prompting me to draw her closer. When I leaned in for a kiss, she turned her head, opting for a hug instead. Yet even that embrace felt more familial than the intimate connection I expected from my wife of three years. What's going on, Susie? What do you mean? Come on, I can tell when you're giving me the cold shoulder. I've been away for six months, and since I've been back, you haven't kissed me once. I even tried to guilt trip you into hugging me earlier, and now you're avoiding sitting close, cuddling, or kissing. So what's happening? I just need time to readjust to having you home again, I suppose. Baloney. You never needed time before. What's changed? Susie remained silent, averting her gaze. Have you been seeing someone else? Susie shot me an angry glare before standing up. I thought she was going to speak, but she bit her tongue and headed toward the bedroom instead. Where are you going? Can't you at least answer that simple question? The sound of the bedroom door slamming shut echoed through the house. I took a few deep breaths before following her, unsure whether to apologize or demand an explanation. I discovered she had locked the bedroom door. Susie, what are you doing? Can you unlock the door so we can talk about this? My only response was silence. I returned to the living room and reclined on the couch, uncertain of my thoughts. Was Susie upset with me for questioning her fidelity, or was she angry because I hit the nail on the head? Either way, this discussion isn't finished. Trying to distract myself, I turned on the TV, tuning into the news until I drifted off to sleep again. As sunlight flooded the living room, I woke up and stretched before heading to the kitchen for coffee, thinking I should offer Susie some too. I walked down the hallway to the bedroom, the door was open, but Susie was nowhere to be found. After checking the bathroom, I returned to the lounge and noticed her car was gone. Had she left for work already? Glancing at my phone, I realized it was almost 8 a.m., late by my standards. After making my coffee, I decided to grab breakfast before visiting mom and dad at the family business downtown. In the garage, I found my pickup truck covered in dust despite asking Susie to drive it occasionally while I was away. It seemed she hadn't. Attempting to start it, I was met with silence. I needed a jump start. Fortunately, my house sat on a slight decline, so I pushed the truck onto the road and rolled it downhill. After gaining enough momentum, I hopped in, shifted into second gear, and released the clutch. The engine roared to life. Thankfully, I resolved to take it to a garage for a checkup just to be safe, they could also assist if I needed another jump. After leaving the garage, I stopped by a cafe close to my parents' business for a syrup waffle. Then, I parked my car in front of Thomas Electrical. Upon entering, I noticed a young man behind the counter, presumably one of the new hires. Can I assist you, sir? he asked. No thank you, I'm all set, I replied as I made my way towards the service door leading to the storeroom, workshop, and office area. I'm sorry but only staff are allowed beyond this point, he interjected. It's all right. I'm Joe Thomas, your boss's son, the one from the Air Force. That's right. Are my family back there? Yes, they're all back there at the moment, thanks. As I walked into the expansive workshop and storeroom area, I observed familiar faces among the guys gathering equipment from the racks at the far end. Susie caught my eye engaged in conversation with my fraternal twin John. Despite sharing a birthday, we aren't identical, rather, we resemble regular siblings, each with distinct features. Standing tall at six feet three inches with a sturdy frame, I sport sandy-colored hair and bluish-gray eyes, inheriting dad's physique but mom's hair and eyes. In contrast, John, at five feet nine inches, boasts a leaner build with dark brown hair and eyes taking after mom's physique but dad's hair and eyes. What intrigued me was the nature of their discussion, seemingly more personal than work-related. 
I couldn't help but notice John's occasional comforting gestures towards Susie, like rubbing her arm or shoulder. As I made my way to the office, I witnessed them sharing a hug, perhaps John offering solace following my interrogation of Susie's loyalty the previous night. Inside, Mom greeted me with joy, enveloping me in a warm embrace. It's wonderful to have you home, sweetheart. So is it true? Have you left the Air Force for good? Yeah, I decided not to re-enlist. How have you been, Mom? Keeping Dad and everyone else in check? Mom chuckled at my question. You know your father marches to his own drum. You're just like him. As I released my grip on Mom, Dad stepped forward and embraced me, a gesture rare enough to indicate his happiness at my return. Good to see you, son. Welcome home. Good to be home permanently, Dad. How was Germany this time? Did you enjoy it, or was it starting to feel too routine? It was good, and the guys there were great too. But I definitely missed all of you. What are your plans now? Any regrets, or are you considering re-enlisting later? No regrets, at least not yet. I'm not sure what I'll do next. I might need a few days to figure it out. Well, you know there's a job waiting for you here whenever you're ready. Don't pressure him, Bill. He doesn't have to come back to work here. We've talked about this. This business belongs to him too, Betty. It seemed that this conversation had touched on something that had been simmering between mom and dad before. I hadn't mentioned to anyone that I wasn't planning on working here, so I wasn't sure why they would have been discussing it. So, are you planning to re-enlist in the Air Force or considering returning to work with us? Neither. I might explore other options. I haven't made up my mind yet, I acknowledged. Then Dad chimed in. Hey Joe, what's on your agenda for today? Nothing specific. Why do you ask? Well, how about spending the day with me? I've got a task I could use your help with, and we can catch up as well. Sure, Dad, why not? Just give me ten minutes to gather the equipment, and I'll meet you at the back loading bay. Sure thing. As Dad headed out to the storeroom, John followed suit. Susie and Mom sat down at their desks, and I realized that Susie hadn't spoken to me all morning. Actually, she hadn't said anything to me since I confronted her about cheating last night. I approached Susie's desk, lowering myself beside her, and spoke in hushed tones. Can we have a conversation, or are you going to act like I'm not here? I'm not sure if we have anything to discuss, she replied coolly. We have plenty to discuss. I just get the feeling you're avoiding it, Susie gave me a determinately cold look. Not until you apologize. I'm willing to apologize, but first can you explain why you've been distant since I returned? I noticed you were more engaged in conversation with John earlier than you've been with me. Do you still want to be married to me? Once again, she stared at me before replying. Just because I didn't immediately initiate intimacy doesn't mean I'm being unfaithful. But you've shown no affection at all, as if we're not even married. Care to explain? I need some time to readjust. Readjust from what? What's really going on, Susie? Nothing, Bill is waiting for you and I have work to do. Please just go. Realizing I wouldn't get any answers, I stood up and headed outside to the truck where Dad was finishing loading the gear. Ready to go, Joe? Upon arrival at the job site, we found ourselves faced with a renovation project. Although the house had essentially been stripped bare, Dad's task was to install all new wiring throughout. After unloading our tools and equipment, we made our way inside. Carpenters and laborers were also present, and we were greeted by the foreman on our way in. Fortunately, we didn't have to interact with the homeowners directly, Dad had already begun work here the day before, so we were already partway through. While I started wiring for the outlets, Dad continued with the lighting. After about two hours, we took a lunch break, sitting on the back of Dad's truck. 
take half of my sandwiches. Mom always packs too much for me. Thanks. We sat there eating, observing the other workers moving in and out of the house. This morning Mom mentioned something about me not returning to work here, saying you two had discussed it. What's that all about? Dad glanced at me, then shook his head slightly. Mom thinks it might be best if you didn't work with us anymore, that it's John's best opportunity to succeed. I disagree. This business is as much yours as it is John's. What is Mom implying? That my presence is somehow holding him back? She believes that currently he's content. She sees it as his best opportunity to secure a good job, start a family, and lead a happy life. How does that relate to whether I'm working with you guys? She's concerned that he might not achieve that if you're around. Geez. I knew he was her favorite, but for her to suggest that she wants me out of the picture just for his happiness really? Yeah, I understand. We've had numerous arguments about it already. I'm not satisfied with their situation. I don't think it's fair. Wait, what situation are we discussing? Dad gave me a puzzled look, then his expression turned to shock. Damn, you're completely unaware, aren't you? About what, Dad? John? What's going on? Dad glanced away, shaking his head, then returned his gaze to me. I shouldn't be the one to explain any of this. I thought you were already aware. What was Mom supposed to discuss with me? I'm lost. Not Betty, Susie. She informed us that you were aware. For heaven's sake, Dad, just tell me what you're talking about. Susie and John. They've been together since you left for Germany, he said. She said you two had broken up before you left. What on earth? No, we never broke up. I sat there for a moment, stunned by what Dad had just revealed. I've been baffled since I got home because she's been distant with me, and now you're telling me she's with my brother? Dad remained silent, just shaking his head. It was evident he wasn't pleased to be caught in the middle. So both you and Mom knew about John and my wife while I've been away, and you were okay with it? No, I wasn't. Initially, your mom was upset too, but she eventually accepted it and even supported them. So. Have they been secretive about it? Does everyone at work know? Yeah, everyone knows. Damn JN is the worst, he knew I had no clue yet acted all friendly this morning. I'm sorry you found out like this. Susie mentioned you two were considering a separation before you went to Germany, Dad continued. She and John have been close for a long time. We just assumed they got together after you left because they were both lonely. It means John has been attempting to pursue my wife for a while now. It's unbelievable that he would betray me like this. Although maybe it's not so surprising. Remember Maddie? She was my first serious girlfriend, and I was deeply in love with her. She confided in me that Jan had made inappropriate advances towards her at a party one night. I didn't believe her, so she ended our relationship. Then there's Jane. I know he was involved with her after we broke up. She later revealed that he had always been flirting with her while we were together. He always seems to desire what I have in terms of women. I believe he has always admired you, Joe. More like he's always envied me. So, Mom thinks it's best for me to step aside so that John can have my wife in the business? Does she expect me to hand over my house, my truck, and all my money too? Would that satisfy her? Your mom didn't realize they were deceiving her. She thought you had left Susie and she considers Susie as her own daughter. She hoped they could find happiness together, but she worried it would be challenging with you working together every day. Damn John. He's dead to me now. Come on, Joe. He's still your brother. I understand your anger, and you have every right to feel that way but with time, things will likely improve. Besides, Susie shares some responsibility in this, just as much as John does. No, John is my brother, 
my twin brother. He's the one who should support me. I'll never forgive him for this, not for the rest of our lives. And Susie, well, she truly is deceitful. Last night I confronted her about her behavior. When I got home this morning, suspecting she was cheating on me, she had the nerve to demand an apology from me. I'm really sorry about all of this, Joe. It's a complete mess. So, Dad, when you return to the store, what will you say to John and Susie now that you know the truth? Nothing, I'm afraid. I'd lose my temper. I already gave them a piece of my mind when I found out they were together after you left. Even though I thought you and Susie were separated, it was still wrong, especially since your bed was still warm when she let him in there. And you're still married. They could have at least waited until you two were divorced. I took a sip of water while pondering my next move. Despite being furious, one thing drilled into us during training was how to maintain composure in emotional situations. As I stepped into my house, memories of yesterday flooded back, starkly contrasting with my earlier blissful ignorance of my screwed up life. Recalling my bedroom, I couldn't shake the image of them together. It seemed likely they had just finished their tryst when I arrived, explaining her surprise at seeing me, she probably wondered if I had caught John leaving. Are you able to continue working? I understand if you need some time. I'm going out, Dad. I need space to process all of this, Joe. Don't do anything rash, alright? Don't worry about me going after John or Susie. I won't ruin my life seeking revenge on them. They're not worth it. Let those two deceitful individuals have each other. Give me a call later, Joe, just so I know you're safe and where you are, okay? Sure thing, Dad. I will. I strolled down the road towards the store to retrieve my pickup truck. It wasn't the welcoming return I had anticipated. Upon reaching the establishment, I intended to leave immediately, but I couldn't bring myself to. I circled around to the back and entered the office where my mom and Susie were stationed. Mom, have you both completed that task already? No, Dad is still on it. I just returned to speak with my wife, the one who has been cheating on me with my own brother. What are you saying? You two aren't together anymore? No, Mom. I just discovered the deceit of this lying woman and my treacherous brother. We were never separated. They deceived you and Dad, isn't that right, Susie? Susie remained silent, fleeing the office instead, undoubtedly heading to John. Do you still want Mom to push me out so John can take my place in the business? I didn't realize, Joe. I thought you and Susie had separated. That's what I was told. Why didn't you mention Susie and John when I called? Neither you nor Dad brought them up. We thought discussing them would upset you. We figured you needed time to move on. Well, now you see. You can't rely on them. Enjoy trusting them with the business. I stormed out of the office, torn between anger towards my mom and Susie. As I left, John approached me. Back off, John. It's in your best interest. You need to go. Joe, and don't come back. This isn't your place anymore. With that, I walked up to him, sending him to the ground with just one punch. John has never been a good fighter and has always relied on me for that. Standing over him as he crouched on the ground, I said, You're nothing to me, John. Do you understand? You're not my brother anymore. Don't call me, don't contact me, and if you see me, turn away. As for Susie, I don't really care what you two do, but she needs to get her stuff out of my house today. I wish she wasn't there when I get back. Walking past him, I left the store and jumped into my pickup truck. Three months have passed since I discovered Susie and John's relationship. She moved in with John, prompting me to sell our house due to the memories it held of Susie. The sale went smoothly, covering the mortgage and leaving me with some extra money. After splitting the proceeds with her, 
I opted to rent an apartment in South San Francisco for its proximity to the international airport and aviation businesses. Within a week, I secured a job at a prominent aviation technical support firm. As my skills were in demand, transitioning from fighter jets to commercial planes required some learning, but I was adapting. Finally feeling settled in my new environment with a fresh job and supportive colleagues, I had to move forward with my life. My parents visited, and I reconciled with my mom over past events. Susie and John still worked with them, though Susie's role had been scaled back. One Friday afternoon as I finished work, my colleagues invited me for dinner and drinks downtown, which I gladly accepted. We gathered at a restaurant at 7 p.m., enjoying a meal before indulging in drinks. By 8.30 p.m., we made our way down Grand Avenue to the nearest bar to kick off the evening. While the guys ordered drinks, I excused myself to the restroom. Upon my return, I accidentally bumped into a woman as she was exiting the ladies' room. Sorry about that, I said. It's okay, she replied, turning to face me. Maddie? Oh my god, Joe! How have you been? Maddie greeted me with a quick hug. It had been about eight years since we last saw each other, back when we graduated high school. Maddie, you're looking great. Even better than back in high school. Do you reside in South City as well, or are you just visiting? I live in San Bruno, close to the airport. That's where I work, right nearby. I'm here with some colleagues from work. You work at SFO? I work there too. Seriously, what's your role? I manage a travel agency. What about you? I'm an avionics technician. How did you get into that? I thought you'd be working with your dad's electrical business. I did initially, I apprenticed with him. But later, I joined the Air Force once I was qualified. And you're out of the Air Force now? Yes, I completed my four-year enlistment. I'm happy to be a civilian again now. All right. And I heard you got married too. Yeah, I was, but not anymore. We're separated. How about you? You can't possibly still be single. Actually, I am, but like you, I'm separated as well, for about six months now. I acknowledged Maddie with a nod as a rush of memories and emotions flooded my mind. She had always been the one who slipped away, beautiful, intelligent, and devilishly witty. I apologize if I'm keeping you from your date. He'll likely come looking for you soon. You're still as smooth as ever, Joe, but I'm not here with a date, just a few girlfriends. Are they single too? What, are you already tired of my company? Never, actually. Some of the guys I'm with are single as well. How about we gather our friends and make it a fun night for everyone? That sounds like a plan. We're at the front table. I'm sure we can arrange for another table. Great. I'll bring the guys over. We returned to our respective tables, where I found a beer waiting for me. Took you a while, Joe. Were you in the bathroom? Mike teased. Nah, just ran into an old flame on the way back. The individuals I'm seated with include Mike, Brian, Jay, and Teddy. Teddy being the eldest, serves as our team leader. He's a married man with extensive job experience, much like myself, having also served in the Air Force. The remaining three, including me, hold similar positions, and to my knowledge, they are all single. Does she have friends? Jay inquired. Yes, she does. I've already arranged for us to join them, they're seated at the front table over there. The group turned their attention to the trio of attractive women at the table, their smiles becoming evident. They look great, Teddy. Do you think Joe might deserve a promotion for this? Remember, I'm married. You guys can buy Joe a beer to express your gratitude. Not me, I'm already involved with someone. But for you three, it could be your lucky night, Brian chimed in. 
Let's not just stare at them, let's go over and join them, Mike and Jay agreed. As we all made our way to the table, Maddie greeted me. Hey, Maddie. Hi, Joe. Could you guys grab the other table and chair over there and bring them over? While we arranged the two tables, Maddie took charge of introductions. I'm Maddie, and these are Bethany and Kira, she said. Hey, ladies, I'm Joe, and this is Jay, Mike, Brian, and our boss Teddy, I added. So, how do you know Joe, Maddie? Kira inquired. He was my first love, we were high school sweethearts, Maddie explained, eliciting gasps from Kira and Beth. So, Joe, are you single? Kira followed up. Yes, he is, but don't even think about playing matchmaker for us. He's got some serious apologizing to do first, Maddie interjected with a smile. Oh, sounds like you messed up last time, bro, Jay chimed in. Yeah, I did. Big time, I admitted. Maddie leaned over to whisper something to me. Are you only saying that now, or have you finally realized I was telling the truth about John? I've only recently come to realize it. He's the reason I'm separated from my wife. After seeing John's true nature, I reflected on what you told me before. I deeply regret not believing you, I whispered back. Well, we were young, and he was your brother. But you can try to make it up to me if you want. I'd like that very much, Maddie said, then gave me a quick kiss on the cheek. Wow, that was fast, Maddie. What did he say to win you over so quickly? Bethany asked. I don't kiss and tell. Besides, Joe always had a way with words, Maddie replied. Really? Was he your first too? Kira asked, grinning widely. Kira, that's a bit personal to ask in front of everyone, we just met, Bethany interjected. Just spill it, Maddie. Fine. Yes, he was. Happy now? Maddie laughed. What about you, Joe? Was Maddie your first too? Bethany asked. Yeah, she was my first and the best, I replied, earning pats on the back from some of the guys. Is it just me, or is it getting warm in here all of a sudden? Bethany joked, fanning herself. All right, enough about Joe and me. Who are the single guys here? I need you to keep these two ladies occupied. That would be Jay and Mike. Good luck with them, ladies, Teddy said, shaking his head and laughing. The following hour or two passed quickly, with everyone feeling at ease and enjoying themselves. Jay and Mike appeared to be hitting it off with Bethany and Kira, while Teddy and Brian were also having a good time. Personally, I found myself enjoying a conversation with Maddie. She has a way of making me feel completely relaxed, I'm pretty sure I had a silly grin on my face the entire time. At some point, I excused myself to use the restroom, and Maddie did the same. After finishing up, I waited for her in the hallway outside. When she emerged, she joined me, leaning against the wall. It's really great to see you again, Joe. I mean that, she said. Same here. I forgot how much I enjoyed spending time with you, I replied. I know, right? Maybe it's like they say about your first real love, that you carry a connection with them for the rest of your life. Maybe, I said with a smile. Smooth, Joe. Very smooth, Maddie teased. Why don't we start with you giving me your number and then asking me out to dinner? What if I want to start by giving you a kiss first? I countered. Maddie met my gaze and let out a mischievous giggle. Okay, Joe. We can start with that. I leaned in and gave Maddie my first genuine kiss since our senior year in high school. It surpassed my memory of it. Maddie gently placed her hand on the side of my face and wrapped her other arm around my back. I reciprocated by embracing her tightly as we kissed. It felt incredibly satisfying. As we parted from the kiss, we locked eyes. Wow, that was amazing. 
you've still got it, Joe. I think that was all you, Maddie. God, I could use more of that. I leaned in for another kiss. This time, Maddie ended it a bit sooner. You said one kiss, not a marathon. We should head back to the table before I completely lose control. Must we? If it were up to me, I'd be taking you home right now. Easy there, tiger. How about dinner first? I'm not that easy, Maddie replied playfully. All right, but can I at least have another kiss before the night's over? Yes, you can. I promise. We rejoined the others, my mind buzzing with thoughts of the kiss with Maddie. As we chatted and danced over the next hour, couples formed, Jay with Bethany, Mike with Kira, while Teddy had already left for home to his family, and Brian departed shortly after, leaving just the three couples. Around 1 a.m., I found myself dancing to a slow song with Maddie when she mentioned that she and the girls would be heading home after this song. Remember, you promised me another kiss before you left tonight. That's why I'm giving you a heads up now so you have time. I gazed into Maddie's captivating blue eyes and leaned in for the kiss. It began softly but quickly escalated with passion as our tongues intertwined. It felt as though the world around us blurred, with my focus solely on our connection. As I kissed her with newfound desire, I felt as if our mouths separated. I gazed into Maddie's eyes. Upon opening mine, she appeared breathless, offering no words, no laughter, or her usual playful banter. Maddie drew me closer and kissed me again. It was astonishing how quickly we had connected in just a few hours. Perhaps it was our shared history or maybe lingering unresolved emotions, but I was already captivated. You better remember to call me, Joe, she insisted. That's something you don't need to worry about. I'm already eager to see you again, and you haven't even left yet. Maddie nestled her head against my chest as we swayed to the music for the rest of the song. When it ended, we returned to our table. Jay and Bethany were already there, lost in a kiss, with Mike and Kira trailing behind us from the dance floor. The evening was becoming surreal. Could it really be that three couples were forming in one night? As we all headed out to the front, waiting for cabs, we remained in pairs, engrossed in our separate conversations. When the first cab arrived for the three girls, Maddie quickly gave me a kiss and a reminder to call her before hopping in with Bethany and Kira. Left standing there were Jay, Mike, and myself. Joe, I really appreciate this. Bethany is amazing. We've already set up another date, Jay said. Same here. Kira actually asked me out. I was too nervous to do it myself, fearing she might say no, Mike replied. I'm glad I could assist, guys. Tonight has been fantastic, even better than I had hoped for, I said. Saturday morning rolled in with a slight hangover but nothing unbearable. Thoughts of last night, especially Maddie, already occupied my mind. After a quick shower and getting dressed, I made my way to a nearby cafe for some coffee and waffles while mulling over Maddie. My phone interrupted with a call. Hello? Hi, Joe. I realized I didn't give you my number last night. I just got yours, so make sure to save this, okay? Will do. Actually, I've been thinking about you all morning. Well, that's not entirely true. You've been on my mind since last night. Really? Already smitten with me, Joe Thomas? If we were in Salem in the 1600s, I'd accuse you of witchcraft for casting a love spell on me. Oh my god, did you rehearse that line? Maddie chuckled on the other end. Maybe a little. Did it work? Yes, it did. So, if I have you under my spell... Can I command you to take me to lunch later? Consider it done. Just text me your address and the time. Will do. And Joe, thanks for last night. I haven't felt this happy in a while. I feel the same. It's like hitting the reset button on life, new place, 
new job, new friends, and hopefully someone special to share it all with. If I find out who she is, I might have to compete, Maddie replied with a mischievous giggle. What? I laughed at her unexpected response. Well, we're not exactly new, but maybe we can make it special this time around. I'll take that, I replied. All right, my waffles are getting cold. Don't forget to text me your address. I'll do it now. See you soon, Joe. Bye, Maddie. As I drove up to Maddie's apartment complex, I noticed that there were no parking spaces available. Fortunately, while looking around the neighborhood, I spotted Maddie coming out of the main entrance. I honked at her and waved. She looked stunning in a light blue floral summer dress that accentuated her tan skin and loose blonde curls. I couldn't help but hope that she still had those amazing cheerleader legs and toned buttocks that I remembered. While most guys admired Maddie's curvaceous and beautiful face, my attention was initially drawn to her legs and buttocks. In my eyes, she was undoubtedly the most attractive cheerleader in our high school, and I considered myself the luckiest guy on the football team to date her. This opinion was shared by many of my teammates. Maddie jumped into my spotless pickup truck, the result of two hours of morning cleaning especially for her. She leaned over and kissed me on the cheek. So, where are we going for lunch, Joe? What about Pedro Point? We can have a snack on the way and then enjoy a meal while admiring the ocean view. It's a short walk. It sounds perfect. As we strolled along the trail towards the overlook, I reached out and took Maddie's hand, noticing her smile as I did so. We settled on a patch of grass at the trail's end, gazing out at the expanse of the Pacific Ocean. The view was breathtaking, and we sat in quiet awe for a few moments, absorbing it all. Retrieving our lunch from my backpack, we indulged in the sandwiches we had picked up along the way. I was expecting a fancy restaurant or cafe, Maddie remarked, but this is much better. I'm glad you think so. I wanted to make today memorable. Just dining out wouldn't have sufficed. Maddie nestled her head against my shoulder. You're making me feel nervous, Joe. How so? Well, just yesterday, I had no clue about your whereabouts or activities. Now, I find it hard to imagine not being with you. It's all happening so quickly, and I'm afraid of getting hurt again. I'm sorry for not trusting you before. No, not just that. I'm worried about being hurt again, especially after what I went through in my marriage. I only truly moved on from that a few months ago, and now here I am with you. I can't do a casual relationship with you, either, Joe. It's all or nothing for us, and that terrifies me. What frightens you? Falling in love once more? Doesn't it frighten you, knowing how it feels when love goes wrong? I've experienced that. But I won't let it deter me. My past relationship with my ex-wife won't resemble ours. You're very different from her, and we're different together than I was with her. What about your ex? Do I remind you of him? No, not at all. I always wished he was more like you, or at least how I remember you. But what if you're not who I remember? What if you turn out to be more like him than I'd like? I can't speak for your ex or what happened between you two, but in my mind, I'm still that same high school kid who fell for you. I've gained some scars and experiences since then, some good, some bad, but I'm still the same person, still hopeful for a great life shared with someone I love. Okay, but if you hurt me again, I won't give you another chance. I won't need another chance. I promise. Maddie lifted her head, and we shared a soft kiss. After lunch, we returned to Maddie's place to hang out, or rather, to make out. I did not insist on intimacy with Maddie, as she expressed concern about the pace of our relationship. So, I opted to take it slow and let her dictate the speed of our progress. On Saturday night, Maddie had plans to see a movie with Bethany so we ended up double dating with them and Bethany's partner, Jay. I didn't spend the night, and on Sunday, 
I visited my parents for lunch, ensuring that JN and Susie wouldn't be there. Throughout the following week, I took Maddie out to dinner twice. On Friday night, the three couples went out together again. It wasn't even 10 p.m. when Maddie leaned over to me at our table. Joe, could you take me home? Are you feeling all right? Is something the matter? No, everything's fine. Actually, it's quite the opposite. I want you to take me home. I met Maddie's gaze, arching my eyebrows. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Maddie gave me a gentle kiss on the lips before we rose from our seats and I informed our four friends that we were leaving. They seemed to understand without any objections. Once we arrived back at Maddie's place, she led me into the living room. Take a seat on the couch, Joe. I'll be out in a moment. Would you like a drink, Maddie? No, I'm fine. Feel free to help yourself, though. I considered it but opted against more alcohol, wary of its effects. I hadn't had much that night, so I decided water was the safer choice. Returning to the couch, I settled in just as Maddie emerged from her bedroom. She was clad in a seductive red satin nightgown. Wow, you look incredible in that, I said. Thank you, Joe. I bought it this week just for you, Maddie replied with a smile. Thank you, really. You look absolutely stunning. Sitting down next to me on the couch, Maddie snuggled up and we kissed gently. Then suddenly, Maddie burst out laughing. What's so funny? I asked. I'm trying to be polite, but I just can't believe I'm as nervous as I was when we were 18 and going to do this for the first time. I feel like a teenager again, and it's all your fault, Joe. Don't worry, I feel the same way, I reassured her. If it calms you down, I was just a little nervous before you came back, worried if I'd had too much to drink tonight. Maddie smiled gently at me, running her hand over my face. We only met a week ago, and I've already fallen in love with you again, Joe. I kissed Maddie gently on the lips. I'm so glad to be with you too, Madeline. Maddie giggled back at the kiss. Are we going to call each other by our full names now, Joseph? Just for today, until our wedding day? Maddie froze, looking up at me with a serious expression. The smile was gone from her face. We moved on to the most enjoyable part of the evening. Everything happened in a blur. I hadn't felt such strong feelings of love at first. Each of us gave each other satisfaction, and then we became close. I don't know how long it lasted, but it was amazing, the best moment of my life. I collapsed on top of Maddie, gasping and exhausted. The warmth between us was palpable as we lay there, enjoying a rare feeling of bliss. Wow, that was amazing, Joe. I've missed you so much, Maddie remarked. I chuckled at her remark. So, you're only interested in my body, right? No, I like you completely, Maddie nudged me lightly, forcing me to roll off her onto my back. She turned to me and put her head on my chest. Joe, was it as good for you as it was for me? I mean, I'm not sure how to put it into words. It was an incredible feeling, Maddie. It was amazing. It was like reconnecting with you. It's hard to explain. I ran my fingers through her hair. Maddie lifted her head to meet my gaze. I can't believe I've already fallen in love with you so much. You know that, don't you? I love you too, Maddie, I replied sincerely. Really? Maddie asked, looking surprised. Over the following weeks, Maddie and I became inseparable. When we weren't at work, I frequently stayed over at her apartment since it was conveniently located for both of us. Eventually, I began leaving some work attire and a toothbrush at her place for added convenience. It was remarkable how quickly we settled into our routine. It felt like finding the missing piece of oneself, achieving a sense of wholeness. Our time together in high school, spanning about a year, had already fostered a deep familiarity between us. 
Now, with greater maturity and life experiences, we were delving into a more profound understanding of ourselves. On a Tuesday evening, after returning from dinner, I lounged on Maddie's couch, relishing the happiness of being by her side. She emerged wearing an oversized t-shirt that resembled a dress and nestled beside me on the couch. Joe, I was thinking it's not necessary if you're not comfortable, but should we discuss what happened in our marriages, just so we both understand how we ended up here? Maddie asked softly. What's the purpose? I inquired. So we can grasp what occurred, I suppose. I don't want us to repeat the same mistakes. All right. Would you like to start, or shall I? Maddie replied. You go ahead. I have a feeling your story might be longer than mine, I said. Okay, where should I begin? Well, how did you two meet, and what was she like as a person back then? Not how you see her now, but back then, Maddie asked. We met at a bar when I was a third-year apprentice, and she was studying business at Mills College. We were both twenty-one. She seemed pleasant but reserved. It took some effort to get her to engage in conversation. A few drinks helped with that. I didn't immediately think she's the one or anything like that. I think we gradually grew on each other as we started dating. After my apprenticeship, I joined the Air Force. I proposed six months into my service, and we got married about six months after that. Maintaining a relationship in the military is tough, especially when your partner doesn't relocate with you. She had a job in the city while living in our place in Oakland. We had just bought a small three-bedroom house, so we spent more time apart than together. What was her personality like? How did you both interact? Well, she was determined, quite stubborn even. It seemed like she struggled to open up about her feelings or emotions keeping them close to her chest, even with me at times. Yet she could be warm and humorous when the mood was right. I often felt responsible for setting that mood, but sometimes. I didn't have the energy for it when I was stationed abroad. Oddly enough, it seemed to benefit our relationship initially by creating a sense of longing when we were apart. When I returned home, things would be great for a month or so. I could sense her loneliness when I was away, so I arranged for mom and dad to hire her to help manage the family business. That way, she had familiar faces around to support her. We needed both incomes to cover the mortgage, so her joining me overseas wasn't feasible. Although in hindsight, we could have rented out our place and traveled together, I suppose. When did she begin collaborating with your parents? That would have been during my third year in the Air Force, roughly a year and a half after we got married. Were you present much after that? Is that when your relationship started encountering difficulties? Yeah, I wasn't around much. I was stationed in Germany for the latter half of my third year, then again for the final six months. During the six months in between, I was stationed at Edwards with one of the test squadrons, so I'd only come home on weekends. Did she start getting closer to John during that period? Yeah, I suppose so. They always got along well, but I never suspected anything else was going on. While I was at Edwards, our relationship started to deteriorate. Looking back, I think it was probably because John was making advances on her at work. Do you think she might have thought she could switch to the brother who would be home more often? Well, if it was that simple, the timing was foolish. She knew my enlistment was coming to an end, and I never said I would re-enlist. So, she essentially started seeing John when I only had six months left. Maybe she just fell for him. He can be very convincing. It didn't affect you, right? No, but I haven't been away from you most of the time like I've been with John all this time. And yet, even if that were the case, I wouldn't let it happen because I loved you, and that would be wrong. I mean, I was so disgusted when he was bothering me that night at the party. But I was a little drunk, so he just kept doing it because I didn't directly tell him to leave. Why didn't you do that? He was your brother. I knew he was a little drunk too, and at first, 
I thought he was just fooling around. But then the situation escalated. You mentioned that he kept doing it. What exactly was he doing? He was sneaking up on me from behind, then he hugged me tightly so that I couldn't leave, even when I screamed at him to stop. Everyone just thought it was a joke, that we were just fooling around. But there were others who were fooling around too. I remember being very angry that you weren't there because John wouldn't have dared if you were. I was also angry at myself for not leaving the party then, but I was determined that John wouldn't ruin my evening. Yes, I apologize for that too. Anyway, he intercepted me in the hallway when I was coming out of the toilet and pushed me into one of the bedrooms. Well, you can imagine the rest. It was the first time I found myself in a situation where everything happened against my will. No one helped me, they probably assumed that I was an accomplice because they always saw John with you and me together. They might think that I'm just fooling around with him while you're playing football. Well, it's nice to know that at least you were able to protect yourself. I hope he still feels the pain of his chicken eggs. So, what's your story? I met my ex, Simon, when we were both in college in our sophomore year. We started dating and got engaged about a year after graduation. We got married about two years after that. So, you were together for a few years before you got engaged, and then it took a while before you got married. Why did it take you guys so long to tie the knot? I'm not sure looking back. I like to think that maybe we both felt it was wrong or something. Perhaps we were content with what we had at that time. Did you still have feelings for him? Well, at the start, yes. But over time, like I imagine it happened with your relationship, we began drifting apart. I think we ended up getting married in a bid to salvage what was left of our connection, under pressure from both our families and friends. But it only lasted about six months. What caused the downfall? Did you both mutually decide to split? No, it all unraveled when he lost his job and struggled with the new one. He turned to drinking, which escalated into violent behavior. Violent? Did he hurt you? It started with words, then escalated to pushes and shoves. By then, I knew it was time to leave. But one night, during an argument, he punched me. I can't even recall what set it off but he came home angry and drunk and took it out on me. I insisted he sleep on the couch that night. The next morning, the violence continued. That was the breaking point. Have you reported it to the police? Men who abuse women often repeat their actions, so it's important to have it documented. That way, if another woman complains, there's a record. Yes, I did. I obtained a restraining order against him, and he had to move out. I haven't seen him since then. I'm sorry you had to go through that, both with John and Simon. I hope your other relationships have been better. You're actually my only other boyfriend friend, and you've treated me well. So, you didn't date anyone else in college until you met Simon? Surely there were guys interested in you during that time. There were but I was still recovering from our relationship. I didn't feel like dating anyone. I focused on my studies and spent time with my friends, they were the ones encouraging me to start dating again the following year. I got a lot of teasing about being like a nun, especially from Mother Meline. I chuckled at that, and Maddie playfully smacked me with a pillow. Tell me, Joe, do you think you'll ever forgive John for what happened? He's your twin brother, after all. No, I don't see that happening. It's not just about Susie or you, it's that he betrayed my trust. I've thought about it a lot since Susie left. Even though we're twins, we were never close friends. Maybe if we were identical twins, things would be different, but we're very different. He was always around, but I never enjoyed spending time with just him and he always tried to take my friends and girlfriends for himself. Looking back, I realized I never really liked him. If he wasn't my brother, we wouldn't have been friends. You know the saying, Joe, you can choose your friends, but not your family. Yeah, but
but it's tough when your family is always intertwined with your friends. Mom and Dad wanted me to include him in everything. I don't know why, he never wanted his own thing or his own friends. That's a big reason why I joined the Air Force, to get away from him. Well, you're away from him now. Let's go to bed, Joe. I just want to cuddle for a while. Wait, you said we should talk about this so we can learn from it. What did we learn exactly? Don't fall for the wrong people, I guess. Is that all? That we made mistakes and who we loved. That, and don't settle for less than you deserve. Okay, I can agree with that. Well, I'm going to take my first choice, the best girl ever, to bed then. Maddie leaned in, kissed me, then took my hand, leading me to the bedroom. Over the following weeks, things unfolded much like they had recently, though now I found it increasingly difficult to recall what life was like before reuniting with Maddie. I felt a profound sense of contentment, wondering if this was what true happiness and love felt like. Maddie joined me last weekend for lunch with my parents, who were thrilled to see her again. They were also pleased to witness my happiness and my move beyond Susie. This week, I consolidated all my belongings at Maddie's place, since we were essentially living together already, rendering paying rent for two places pointless. It had been just under six months since legally separating from Susie and initiating divorce proceedings while Maddie's divorce had recently been finalized, eight months after filing. Hopefully, my divorce would follow suit in a few months. My mom's 50th birthday fell on Thursday, but the celebration was scheduled for late Saturday afternoon at my parents' house. Numerous family and friends were expected, totaling over 60 guests. It was inevitable that I would encounter John and Susie at the party but I resolved not to let their presence dictate my relationship with my parents. While we were getting ready for the party, I glanced at Maddie and was instantly captivated. Her attire wasn't overly provocative, rather, subtly elegant, yet it perfectly highlighted her stunning figure. Her hair was intricately styled in a way I hadn't seen before, adding to her demure yet breathtaking appearance. Stepping up behind her, I embraced her waist our eyes meeting in the mirror. Wow, you look incredible. I just want you all to myself when you look like this. Maybe we should make a fashionable entrance and enjoy the afternoon together, Joe. Stop it. We'll have plenty of alone time after the party. Plus, I'm doing all of this for you. What do you mean? Being the most stunning person at the party? Yes. I want Susie to see how little you miss her and for John to desire what he can't have. So you're doing all of this just to make them envious? I want them to understand that we're the main attraction and they're merely leftovers. Goodness, can you be both naughty and nice simultaneously? For you, I can. I'll be whatever you need me to be. I leaned in and kissed Maddie's bare neck. I couldn't believe my luck to have her by my side. Plus, you look fantastic. I'm glad you let me choose some new outfits for you. You can't stick to t-shirts and jeans all the time. But I thought I rocked the t-shirt and jeans look. You did, but just look at you now with the blazer and trousers. You could pass for a male model or a Hollywood star. I just need to tidy up your hair before we head out. I want you looking flawless. We arrived at our parents' house around 4 p.m. and found quite a crowd already gathered. The party was taking place in the backyard, where a large gazebo had been set up. As we made our way through the house, exchanging greetings with cousins, uncles, and aunts along the way, we bumped into Mom emerging from the kitchen. She paused when she saw us, breaking into a wide smile before enveloping us in hugs. Oh my! You two could step right off the set of a daytime TV romance, looking absolutely stunning, she exclaimed. You're looking great too, Mom. Hard to believe you're not a day over 40. I replied, Oh Joe, you flatterer. Is that how you manage to charm someone as lovely as Maddie here? He's quite the smooth talker, Mom, but it's all genuine, Maddie chimed in. He definitely takes after his father in that department. 
Bill was quite the charmer too, Mom reminisced. Well, happy birthday, Mom, I said, handing her the present and planting a kiss on her cheek. Thank you both, by the way. Susie and John are outside, will that be an issue, Mom, she asked. Not at all, Mom. Tonight's all about you, so enjoy, I reassured her. While I hadn't intended to cause any disturbance at Mom's birthday gathering, I also hadn't planned on engaging in conversation with John or Susie. We headed out to the backyard, with Dad noticing us and making his way over. Hey, Joe! Hey, Maddie! Wow, Maddie, you look amazing. How my son managed to win your heart again is a mystery to me, Dad said, shaking my hand and kissing Maddie on the cheek. I'm not sure, Bill. Your son is quite charming, maybe he inherited that from you. Beautiful and clever, Joe, you've chosen well, Maddie replied. Yeah, I think so. Mom seems to be enjoying her birthday, she looks genuinely happy. You know your mom, a lot of it is just a facade. She's been stressing over this party for weeks. But I hope she can unwind soon and actually enjoy herself. I hope so too, Dad. Joe, your brother and Susie are over there. Are you okay with that? Yeah, as long as they don't come over and start chatting with us, everything should be fine. Alright, I'll let them know to give you guys some space. We mingled with the other guests, most of whom were either relatives or friends of my parents. Some were familiar faces, while others were not. However, it seemed that everyone recognized me, likely due to my height and build, making me stand out. The majority of the guests were captivated by Maddie, showering her with compliments on her beauty. At one point, Maddie headed into the kitchen to assist Mom in bringing out more food, and I noticed Susie trailing behind her. I shook my head, realizing Susie had no clue who she was up against if she decided to confront Maddie. A few minutes later, Susie emerged from the house, appearing somewhat upset. She approached John, and from a distance, I could tell they were attempting to conceal what was clearly a disagreement. Then Susie walked away from him, choosing to sit alone away from where John was standing. Shortly after, Mom, Maddie, and one of my aunts carried trays of food from the house to the gazebo. I observed Maddie glancing over at John, then back at me, sporting a mischievous grin. Goodness, I adore this woman, I thought. After Maddie assisted with the meal, she strolled over to me, wearing an expression of confidence, perhaps even a hint of smugness. You've been up to no good, haven't you? I murmured softly as Maddie stood beside me. You have no idea. I'm itching to hear all about it. I'll fill you in when we get home. For now, let's just revel in how uncomfortable Susie and John will be for the rest of the evening. I glanced at Maddie, unable to suppress my smile as I gently kissed her on the lips. Once my divorce is finalized, I want to marry you. No engagement, just straight to marriage as soon as possible. Are you even going to ask if I want to marry you first? I will. I'll get down on one knee, do the whole shebang, maybe even serenade you if it helps. I'm looking forward to it, Joe, though I can't vouch for your singing. It might be the one thing you're not great at. Fair enough. I'll hire a professional, then, I chuckled. As Maddie predicted, Susie and John hardly exchanged words for the rest of the evening, and when they did, Susie's hostility towards him was evident. I don't consider myself vindictive, but I must admit it was satisfying. Later, I went inside the house to use the restroom. As I left, John was waiting outside the door for his turn, his face showing signs of apprehension. As I approached, he stepped aside to let me pass. I shot him a disapproving look and shook my head slightly as I walked by. That was the extent of my interaction with John for the evening. After the party, I drove Maddie back to our apartment. As we undressed, I was eager to hear about Maddie's conversation with Susie. However, Maddie made me wait, suggesting that we shower together first. 
we exchanged kisses, then Maddie broke the kiss and looked into my eyes. So, do you want to hear about what happened at the party? I nodded in agreement. Well, I went to the kitchen to help your mom prepare some trays of food. But first, she had to go to the bathroom, so I was alone in the kitchen when Susie came in and stood next to me and started putting food on one of the trays. Maddie put her head on my chest and continued the story. Susie started talking to me, so, you're Joe's new girlfriend? Well, I'm his wife, Susie. I guess I'm going to be an ex-wife soon. And I'm not Joe's new girlfriend. I'm Maddie, Joe's first girlfriend he ever loved and who will soon become his wife. I think it took her by surprise. And is that all, Maddie? Who's telling the story here, Joe? I have to thank you, Susie, for leaving a wonderful guy like Joe for a man like John. You've allowed Joe and me to rediscover our love. Joe's terminated your relationship once before. Why assume he won't repeat it? Joe didn't end things last time, I left because he didn't trust me. When I warned him about his brother's intentions to steal his girlfriend, John has a track record of that, you know? Always wanting what Joe has, his friends, his girlfriends, his wife. John knows how to manipulate situations to his advantage. He didn't succeed with me, I'd never sink that low. He did attempt to force himself on me physically. What a charming guy you have there. Honestly, you should keep an eye on him when he's intoxicated or angry, those types struggle with rejection. She gave me a knowing look before exiting the kitchen. I recognize that look, Joe, it's as if she understands the true nature of John. I suspect he may have been abusive toward her already, perhaps not physically yet, but she seemed to grasp it. That could explain their altercation when she returned to John, she avoided him for the rest of the evening. I wouldn't be surprised if he's already been manipulating her to do his bidding. Chances are John was a completely different person when you weren't around, it's as if your presence kept him in line, but he could be quite the cunning jerk in your absence. It reveals how well you can truly understand someone. Why didn't any of you inform me about his true nature? What? inform you that your twin brother, whom you adore, is a complete jerk who probably can't stand you. Plus, he was always present whenever you were around, making it nearly impossible for our friends to discuss him with you. I refrained from telling you because I feared you wouldn't believe me, until that party, at least, and even then, I was proven right, you didn't believe me. Yeah, I can't believe I was so blind to his deceit. I was incredibly naive. No, Joe, you're just a good-hearted person who wants to see the best in others. Don't ever let him change that about you. Maddie turned off the shower and grabbed the towels. Enough storytelling, let's head to bed. Besides, I have something else to share with you. I quickly dried myself and followed Maddie into the bedroom, snuggling naked with her under the sheets. So. What's the other thing you wanted to tell me? Care to guess? Okay, that I'm the best lover you've ever had? Well, yes, but that's not it. That you can't wait to marry me again? Yes, but that's not it either. That you're the most gorgeous woman I've ever laid my eyes on? Come on, Joe, stop teasing. I paused, sensing her breath on my face as we lay together in the darkness. Okay then. I'm assuming you're. Yes, she replied. I kissed Maddie tenderly, the moment seeming to stretch on endlessly, and I asked, Well, lucky for us, I'm not interested in getting engaged right now. Can't have you walking down the aisle all visibly pregnant. How far along are you? Not far. I went to the doctor this week for confirmation tests. You're not upset we didn't discuss it first, are you? I was switching birth control, that's how I think it happened. No, I'm thrilled, truly. I can't wait to be married to you, to buy our own house, to have four kids running around, four. Wait, I want to maintain my figure, you know. I'm sure you'll be the most stunning mom at the PTA meetings, the fittest MILF in the Bay Area. You always know how to charm me, 
Joe. Yeah, I love you, Maddie. I love you too, Joe. Less than two months later, my divorce was finalized. About seven months after separating from Susie, Maddie and I tied the knot. Two weeks later, in an intimate ceremony with family and friends, Bethany and Kira were her bridesmaids while Joe and Mike stood by my side as my best men. We purchased a house in San Bruno that needed significant renovation, but my dad and co-workers provided valuable assistance. Our son, Mason, was born six months after Maddie and I tied the knot. Maddie is now expecting our second child, a healthy baby girl according to the scans. My parents are now delighted grandparents, though they manage the family business without John or Susie. Susie left John shortly after my wedding, apparently due to a restraining order my brother had against her. She returned to the Midwest to be with her family. Maddie's intuition about John's violent tendencies proved accurate. My parents drew a line at John's behavior and removed him from the business. He remains a silent partner like myself but now works for another contractor in San Jose. As for Maddie and me, Dad's prediction came true, we couldn't be happier, and Maddie remains the love of my life.